Check this recoil out. I know what you're thinking, what recoil, right? That's where it's at. Welcome back everybody, Clint here today with Classic Firearms out here at Take Aim Training and Range. Here to talk about tuning your AR because you just got done with your super sweet build, you've got an adjustable gas block, you have no idea what you're doing and you pull the trigger and your gun's a bolt gun. Your bolt's not moving whatsoever and you're like, what the heck's going on? You has got to open up your gas block, man. It's got to, got to tune it right though because you don't want it to be over gas, you don't want it to be under gas. So we're going to talk about that a little bit today. But before we start talking about this DI build that I've got going on, let's talk about this piston guy. This being the PWS Mark 111, we think we found pretty much the perfect combination. It already comes with a H2 buffer. And in that second position, it just runs very, very well. If you suppress it with an H3 buffer, it's, that, is, that is perfection as far as a suppress, go, a suppress gun goes in my mind. It just runs very well in that situation. So how does it run with second position H2 buffer? Let's find out. And also, too, since that's a 300 blackout, I make sure that we have one of our orange blaze mags here. Um, make sure I have those identifying my 223. Don't want to confuse your rounds. All right, let's go shoot this guy. Check this recoil out. I know what you're thinking. What recoil, right? That's where it's at. But today's video isn't really about this. We're talking about some adjustments that you can make, but let's talk about adjusting your DI builds. So there's a couple of different, I guess you could say trains of thought when it comes down to this. You want your gun to run more reliably. Uh, you want it to be a little bit softer recoiling, especially if you're shooting at suppressed. You want there to be a little bit more resistance back here in the buffer, so that way all those gases aren't just shooting right back into your face. So what are the different options for you in order to help mitigate all of those that I just, all those factors I just talked about. One of the most popular is probably also the most simple, and that comes down to your buffer weights. We did an entire video where we tested out what type of ejection pattern would we get, what type of reliability would we get uh, through multiple different weights of buffers. Right now I have a carbine buffer in there, which that's your standard uh, weight, and it's very light. Then we have an H, we have an H2 in the PWS still, an H3 and an H4. So the question still is, okay, I'm setting this up to be ran as a designated suppressor host, all right? I will not be removing the silencer from this gun. I've removed the rail so that way I can get to the adjustable gas block a little bit easier. But is an adjustable gas block the good way to go for that too? Because there's some questions about its reliability. Is it as durable as well a buffer? I wouldn't think so, but at the same time, adjustable gas blocks have been around for quite some time. They're used in all sorts of different firearms that are DI guns, and they are reliable, maybe not as reliable as quite simply a piece of metal, but I would like to say that this right here for fine tuning your firearm is the ideal way to go. So without further ado, let's fine tune this guy. So the very first shot we're gonna do with this guy, 300 blackout, and I'm also gonna show you guys too how to actually tune it kind of correctly. If you just have a fully loaded mag and you're like, oh yeah, my ejection pattern looks good. One round, one shot, make sure that bolt locks open. And I'll explain that here in just a moment. But just to get things going, I've got only a couple rounds in here, but let's just go ahead and see what happens. I've got the gas block completely closed right now. There will be no gas coming into the system. I have essentially made this a bolt gun. Let's see. No ejection, right? No reset on the trigger, everything's dead. Now, if I chamber it, boom, now we're ready to rock and roll. So let's go ahead and open that up. Take the adjustable side of it here. I've got, it comes with this nice long Allen wrench, by the way. So it's made so you can actually feed from the front of the rail and adjust it. But I've got this big old thick muzzle device with a silencer. It was just easier to completely remove the rail. So I'm gonna take this guy to come in from this angle over here and Let's just turn that a couple of clicks that way. Now let's see if we even get extraction. We should see maybe some very minimal bolt movement. I don't think we'll actually see extraction. Don't even know if the bolt moved. Oh, actually it caused a malfunction. It almost, it tried. 
but not quite. There's that spent round. So that means open it up some more. So I'm gonna take that, and this is the Aero Precision Adjustable Gas Block, by the way. There we go. Open it up. Let's just do one more rotation. And let's see what that gets us. Let's see if we get some extraction now. That looked pretty good. Looked like we had a pretty decent extraction there. Okay. But was it enough to actually lock the chamber back? Let's see. Yes, it was. Look at that. So I could probably even turn this down just a bit. So let's do that really quick. So I'm going to take this. Let's knock it about... So since I went one full rotation last time, let's, or two full rotations last time, let's back it off there. And now I'm just going to grab one round, since now we're playing with the specifics here. Chamber it up, and let's see if it'll still lock. Nope. So somewhere in that happy medium is going to be right in the middle of those two. So let's go ahead, let's open this guy back up. By the way, this is very precise. I gotta get that lined up just right. There we go. Let's see where we're at now. By the way, I'm just running some uh, PPU, 125 grain, so some pretty quick 300 blackout. Let's see if this gets us where we wanna be. Yep, I felt it that time. All right. That feels pretty good. So as far as tuning that goes with a carbine buffer, all right, feels good. Now what happens if we drop an H4 in it? Now, will the type of adjustment that I've got here at the gas block be, uh, we know it's gonna run with a carbine, but will it work effectively with an H4? That is significantly heavier. Let's find out. This is always the fun part of the job, these little science experiments. And by the way, the echo triggers, some of you guys have those and you're like, oh my goodness, it broke my gun. I can't get my upper to close. Have the hammer forward, have it in the echo position, take your trigger lock there, push it forward, apply pressure on the trigger and close your gun. You'll be ready to go. Okay, let's put one round in it. I don't think, I don't think it's gonna work. I think the buffer is gonna be too heavy and that it won't cycle, let's see. it did though that's interesting i didn't think it would remember too last time when we did our entire buffer video we did find out that in these surprisingly even though the weight difference is massive they actually all ran pretty well now what would that do in a long-term situation as this gun begins to break in more as as it uh it begins to foul up and get a little bit more dirty we might see it not run as reliable with such a heavier buffer let's just go ahead and put a couple of rounds in it let's just say we do five i lost count already because i wasn't actually counting initially so that should be close enough and let's just run these very quickly on semi-auto and see how they perform feels good. Overall, the gun feels really good, even though I'm just getting a magwell grip. So far, I'm pretty happy with that. So again, I'm color, color me already kind of surprised that I have this tuned for a carbine buffer, but it's running just fine with a H4. Well, let's just back it off a little bit and let's just see at what point can I get to, let's see, uh, failure. So let's put this guy back in. Let's close it just a little bit. Two little clicks. On the Aero Precision adjustable gas box, you can feel uh, these little clicks that you're indicating pretty much where you're at there. And let's see what about now. Nope, and that was just very small movement away. So typically, in order to increase reliability with your adjustable gas block, I wouldn't get it to where it's perfect. I'd go perfect and a little bit more to kind of uh, make room for any type of dirt, grime, imperfections that might wind up in the system. So let's just do one, see how that feels. Okay, let's see if we get that bolt to lock open. Nope. <laughs> Where we were at before may have been the bare minimum for what the H4 was gonna be able to take. So let's go ahead and try it again here. Let's just go one more click. All right. This is very precise, honestly. Like I said before, find that perfect spot 
and then go a little bit further. Okay, we found that perfect spot. So let's go ahead and take it. Uh, let's just see, I got two rounds left. Let's go ahead and just go, I think probably go on just two clicks more. That would be plenty. I'd probably feel fine going one click more, but I already know I'm gonna be shooting this suppressed, dedicated suppress, so it's gonna be getting even more and more dirty. So opening it up just a tad bit more, probably not a bad idea. Let's go ahead and put these two rounds in it. And since I got an echo trigger in it, let's do a quick little echo double tap. That was nice and quick. So yeah, seems to be running just fine. And since I've got this mag sitting here, I mean, let's just really make sure this thing's running reliably, all right? And something else that's making me really happy, let's look at my glasses really quick. I'm not crying tears of freedom. I don't have a whole lot of gas back to the face. I can tell I got a little bit, I can taste it some. That's what freedom tastes like. And, uh, but if you look at my glasses, other than naturally being just a little dirty, there's not, I, if I, I wonder, I have another box here, it's just for fun. Should I just open this thing way up and see how much gas I get back to the face? I mean, what's there to lose, right? It's not like, even though I do have the perfect position, I'll, whatever, it's for you guys. So let's just go ahead, let's just drop, what do you say, three rounds? And is opening it up too much going to be detrimental to my eyeball? Let's find out. Go ahead and like this video for my pain. I know you guys like that a lot due to the outside the warehouse content and how much you guys love that. So let me feed that. Let's just open this thing way on up. So at this point, I can pretty much see uh, the the meaty part of the adjuster kind of starting to float out there some and I don't want that to like completely walk out. So I'm definitely shooting with eye protection on. You can forget that in a ways. Let's just see how this feels. Yeah, she gassy, all right. I don't know if my finger was that dirty before, before shooting it with the gas block that far open, but oh my goodness. I mean, it's coming down through here and that's dirty. So close your gas block a little bit, all right? Which I'll do right, right after we turn the camera off here. But before we let you guys go, hey, we're currently giving away a Chris Vector. It is a pretty awesome little SMG, chambered in 45 ACP. This is the enhanced model, also coming with the EOTech 512, super cool uh, holographic sight, can't go wrong with that. We've also got an angled foregrip on it and the Surefire Mini Light. Again, this being the enhanced model has a slightly longer barrel than the original with a slightly longer rail, which allows you to throw more accessories on it, which we did. And it is coming with an Extendo mag. 13 round mag is fine, but if you can have 26, well, go 26, right? Check out our video announcing that as our giveaway. It's a good one. And don't forget to utilize the code word sci-fi. Science, fiction, get it? Because it looks like something out of a sci-fi movie. But anyway, we'll leave it off there, guys. I'll see you down in the comment section below all about adjustable gas blocks and buffers and which one do you prefer over the other. Let me know. Let me know how you like to fine tune your guns. And if you have other theories or methods that might work just as well or better, instead of just one shot, see if the bolt locks open. Let me know, there's a lot adjustable of- Adjustable BCG. Adjustable bolt carrier group, that's another good one. Don't we have something planned for that? Yeah, okay. Anyway, guys, we'll leave it off there. As always, we appreciate you and your business. God bless, and we'll see you next time at classicfirearms.com.